Hey, welcome to the Monday's show, March, no, March, excuse me, December 5th. Uh, I keep, I just keep seeing this the whole thing about gold standard and and fiat currency, why, should we, why we should go back to being a gold standard. Well, from the St. Louis Fed, as you can see. And if you're listening to this, first of all, thanks for listening, but it's uh, from dated November 8th. Uh, 2017. Every few years, the idea of the gold standard becomes a hot topic, and why not? Gold is shiny and valuable, and people like it. Uh, gold standard means that the value of the current country's currency is linked to a specific or specified the amount of gold. Under the gold standard, governments needed to be ready and willing to buy and sell gold to anyone at that at a set price. The gold standard's history, the gold standard has roots in ancient history. Gold was used to fund trade and finance wars. What would people accept in exchange for labor or goods, for their labor, excuse me, or goods? They wanted something tangible and of value. Gold was a good fit because of its limited supply and, frankly, because it was pretty. So new, so new and forming countries relied on the shiny stuff. The U.S. was no different. Commercial banks and Federal Reserve banks had a, uh, a gold reserve requirement. They had to keep reserves of gold in their vaults equal to a fraction of the money they used. For every Federal Reserve dollar that was issued, the Reserve Bank had to have 40 cents worth of gold in its vault downstairs in the basement, explained David Wheelock, Vice President and Deputy Director of Research. <clears throat> and then the Great Depression hit. People hoarded gold instead of depositing it in banks, which created an inter international gold shortage. Countries around the world basically ran out of supply and were forced off the gold standard. The U.S. came off with the gold standard for domestic transactions in 1933 and ended international convertibility of the dollar in 1971. Why not go back to the gold standard? There are significant problems with trying with tying currency to gold supply, to the gold supply rather. It doesn't guarantee financial or economic stability. It's costly and environmentally damaging to mine. Supply of gold is not fixed. The U.S. mines uh, a lot of gold, but we're not the biggest producer, Wheelock said. The bigger the bigger suppliers of gold and would have more control over our currency policy, and there's no reason to go, to have it because we can get the advantages of gold standard and avoid the disadvantages without being on the gold standard. Oh, there you go on that one. Uh, but let's see this. Oh, yes. Two of the biggest gold bugs you can think of uh, in regards to uh, government work. Father and son duo, Rand and Ron Paul, love silver and gold, but differ significantly in personal investment strategies. This is from 2010, so who knows as far as now goes in their holdings of gold uh, certificates and all of that stuff. But anyway, so it's no secret that Ron Paul uh, who was uh, a uh, 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 who was a congressman from Texas, and is similarly the veteran leading son, Senator. Well, not not, not so elect. Uh, Rand Paul are big fans of gold, uh, but while both Pauls are advocates of using gold and silver to curb inflation of the dollar, it appears the elder Paul may be doing more to practice uh, more to practice what he preaches. Ron Paul is uh, exponentially more invested in gold and silver than Rand is, according to an analysis by the Central uh, Center for Responsible and Responsive excuse me, Politics of Federal Personal Finance Disclosure Reports filed earlier that year. According to the according to his most recent disclosure report, Rand Paul has invested between 1,100 and 15,000 in American Centuries Global Gold Fund, which includes stocks in gold, silver, and other mining operations. Ron Paul, meanwhile, has invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in 17 different gold, silver, and other mining companies. 
three-fourths of Ron Paul's assets are within the mining industry, according to the center's analysis uh, of his most recent report. Ron Paul owns gold and silver as an inflation hedge and as a store of value, said uh, Jeff Deist, uh, Deist, I guess, chief of staff for Ron Paul, in an email to Open Secrets blog. This is where I love Open Secrets. Because either way, you can find out open secrets. Anyway, uh, by store of value, Dice explained that Ron Paul, gold and silver investments are static in that they do not pay dividends or provide any cash flow for Pauls. Instead, they act as a safeguard in the event the paper dollar loses significant value. Among Ron Paul's largest gold investments is between 500000 and $1 million worth of stocks in gold producers our producer Gold Corp Inc. and between 250,000 and 500,000 a piece in multinational gold mining the companies uh, Anglo Gold uh, Shanti and Newmont Mining Corporations. According to the center's analysis of records on file with the Senate Office of Public Records, federal politicians are only required to disclose the value of their assets in broad ranges. Ron Paul, however, has far more invest invested in mutual funds, bonds, and other paper assets. That puts him uh, more in line with the general public, said Alan Zabrowski, a real estate and finance professor uh, at Georgia, Georgia State University. Uh, it's not that common to invest in gold, uh, he says. Uh, so Ron Paul, or Rand Paul, excuse me, is closer to the mainstream in that regard. Anyway, so I kind of wanted to bring that up to you guys in regards to that. And also, what is this? And this. The thing that, mo that most government officials don't realize, I think, and it's because the federal government right now is more about sound finance and not, uh, not functional finance. Russia has more of a functional finance look, it looks like, because... Instead of keeping themselves, you know, uh, to sanctions, they find other ways to gain their product out there. So basically, the U.S. and their sanctions, both from the U.S. and uh, U.K., are forcing Russia to change their strategy in regards to sales and clients and stuff of that nature, which is also forcing the United States to sell what should be the consumers here, and that is reserve uh, gas and oil. Um, under Obama, we became independent on that front. Under Trump, uh, he decided that we should start selling this shit. So, um, yeah, and Trump has done a lot of a lot of shady deals. Apparently, he's uh, he. Uh, either loaned or got a loan or something like that with North Korea. Uh, this has just come out as far as I'll work goes. But this is while he was president. So if anybody thinks that President that, that Trump should run again, I would say he's literally doing everything or did everything he could not to let that happen. Despite the fact that he seems like he he's already said that he's going to run again. This is why I'm for ranked choice voting. This is why I want open primary so that every party out there that is a registered and legal party can run and connect or run people, I should say, and have access to voter voters, basically, voter blocks, if you will. Anyway, so the point being is the whole main reason why Russia has not uh, been done in by the sanctions is because, just like us, He's the sovereign currency. He has control over imports and exports and monetary and all the other stuff, just like we do. So using a country like Ukraine, which used to, uh, well, I'm not sure. That I, I've heard they still have a currency, but they have taken out so much in uh, aid from the IMF, from, uh, I think, China. I'm not sure, but... Uh, outside currencies uh, as loans. Ukraine's going to be just like another version of what the EU is. They, they're they going to, you know, they, they're basically going to be insolvent as far as their local currency. 
they're going to be they're going to be dependent on outside finance, which they shouldn't be. They should they should really be focusing on you know making sure that they have a currency, they have a floating exchange rate, they have uh, all the na- rebuilding their natural their their uh, the natural resource, rebuilding their infrastructure. Um, saying f you to the U.S. government in regards to not having to deal with Russia to end the war. Um, that's what he, that's what Zelensky should be doing, but he's not doing that. Uh, as far as I know about anyway, but that's a different story. My point being is, Russia is surviving this. Ukraine is barely surviving. U.S. surviving as well, obviously. The U.K. is surviving as well. Everybody's surviving in regards to this, but it's hard because of U.S. sanctions on commodities being bought and sold in and out of all of these surrounding countries so i think it's better for ukraine to count his losses lick his wounds and obviously is going to be joining nato and the whole point of this war was to try to keep them out of nato because all of NATO is going to be right at their right at russians uh footsteps or doorstep i should say um this, this is building to another war. Don't know if it's going to be a cold war, but another war nonetheless. Anyway. Let's see. And it does... It, I've, I've read out the uh, the Fed's uh, CPI, I think, uh, thing on uh, Friday. And it does seem like every person who... Uh, Every person who has been laid off has had to go into a different industry. So manufacturing has been up, has been plus 19,000 people. I'm guessing that's almost about the same amount of people that have been uh, laid off in regards to the tech companies over the past year and a half. Um, However, which is something that is, I think is um, kind of fitting. Let's get that. Not that. (laughs) Let's see, where was that at? Nope. Where the heck was that? Um, I'll go back here, I guess. And as you can see, the Dow is down. Text. Tech stocks are down. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of glad for that because that means that, that those companies aren't like rallying based on the layoffs. That just tells me that the market is like, you know, you shouldn't have been laying off that many people. That's that's what my thought is on that. But uh, Tesla denies reports of China output uh, output cut as delivery at uh, deliveries hit record. Okay, but they hit record, but yet their stocks are down from what I saw earlier anyway. Anyway, I guess like Mike Norman says, when the when the when the when uh Wall Street is down, it's a good time to buy. But I'm not buying anything, no, I don't have no money for it. Anyway. Uh let's see, was there anything else I wanted to bring up? Uh, yes. Tomorrow is the Georgia runoff between this guy right here and um, what's his face? Herschel Walker, that's right. The former footballer, I guess. Um, if it looks like the Senate is going to get it, but if the Senate Democrats get the 51st vote, I do not want to hear one thing about the Democrats can't do something because they can overrule the, the House as far as I know of. Or at the very least, they can come up with some you know, sweetheart deal to make sure that everything they want gets done. Uh, and Schumer should have gotten everybody on the Democrat side together and passed a funding bill for the next few years. Maybe until next until the next general, as far as that part goes, saving Social Security, even though Social Security is not funded by any tax money, um, 
in fact, uh, MMTers like and also myself uh, do say, you know, since the government can easily fund Social Security and all pensions uh, by passing legislation to to fund it permanently without any political games whatsoever, that kind of crap, um, they can do all that. I mean, Social Security, the Social Security Administration is the only part that they can actually cut. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's true as far as that part goes. Anyway, but I do not want to hear one person bitch about Democrats or Republicans. I say this because I saw too many people online and in, in, in real time talk about how you should vote Republican, you should vote Democrat. Neither party does anything for anybody. Everybody who is a, a higher echelon of the Democrats and Republicans all get tax breaks. They all have health care. They all have like everything paid for because they're because they make sure their butt is taken care of, while our butts are in the sling, as it were. So, if you have a ranked choice voting organization in your state, get a hold of them, help them out to make sure that you have ranked choice voting. Also, open those primaries. Open those primaries, as far as I'm concerned, opens the possibility of more than just two uh, parties having a shot at ruling this country, not just a two-party system. There's not even a two-party system. They both they both take from the same freaking people. That's how that, that's how Trump won the first place. He's a donor. He doesn't care. He didn't care. Never cared. Won't care. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you don't like it, don't watch. Don't listen. But it'd be nice if you shared. Either way. Peace out for now.